Hello friends, myself Kaveria sir and again I am back with the next video on input and output device. But prior to that, I will suggest if you have not seen the other tutorials videos, plus see the tutorial videos and then you see this particular video. And friends, if you really like the content of uh, this channel, please do like, subscribe and share the channel. Now, what are input and output devices? So input devices means one which will give input to Arduino. Now those input can be with the help of switch, it may be a sensor or it may be a mic if it is in terms of sound. Now sensors, what are sensors basically? Sensors are the circuits or the components or the modules which will convert one form of energy into another form. Now what is that form of energy? So, let's say temperature is in the physical form, pressure, wind, light, that intensity of life, air pollution, all these are the quantities which are changing with respect to time. So, they are also called as analog quantities or and they are in the physical format. So, I have to convert that into an digital format. So, conversion of this quantity, physical quantity into an electronic quantity is done with the help of sensors. So we have many different sensors. So we will see each and every sensors. Now the next is actuators. Now what are actuators? Actuators are output devices. Now why I need actuator basically? So if you see the output pins of Arduino, they are in digital format. They give only ones and zeros. But to control the speed of fan, it's not possible to control with ones and zeros. Or to control the intensity is not possible to control with ones and zeros. So I have to use at that point digital to analog converter. Also, these digital pins are giving output in terms of ones and zeros, and the current by given by this quantity or these pins are very the digital output which is available on general purpose pins are as ones and zeros, and the current driving capacity is very less. Now, suppose if I want a nice speaker to be uh, run on the digital pins or a buzzer to be run on digital pin directly if I interface it won't give proper sound so I need some sort of circuit between, between that is called as driver now if I run to run a motor or if I want to run a sub device which is working on 230 volts so I cannot directly control with the help of my audio pins so what I need is some sort of interface between these digital pins and the high current devices or the high voltage devices and that is what is called as actuator so in other words what I can say is a sensor is an input device an actuator is the output device or you can say sensor which converts a physical quantity into electrical quantity so it can be made incompatible with my Arduino inputs and actuator will give output so that it can be made compatible with the devices. I hope uh, this much you have understood. Now take an example of a human body. Now human body has ear as one of the sensor which uh, listens to sound. We have nose as another sensor which smells the fragrances we have eyes as third sensor which see some light as an input and we have mouth or our tongue as another sensor which will take some sort of taste as an input now these are the physical sensors which are available with the human body now our mouth also works as an output device because it can generate sound or we can have a conversation with some other fine i hope you might have understood what you mean by word sensors but all these sensors are physical now I have to convert into electrical parameters so that my Arduino can understand what is the input and it can take some particular action. So my first sensor is this. This is called as PIR sensor. So it's a infrared sensor which is used to sense the presence or absence of human. So if the sensor is connected and if there is a human being in the vicinity of the sensor, this sensor will detect. Now how it will detect? Let's say when there is no human being surrounding it, it will give logic 1. Fine. Now, the moment somebody comes near to it, the pin status will change from logic 1 to 0. So my Arduino will sense the change in the status and change in the status can be used to take some action. Now, what can be the action? I can glow LED or I can glow any buzzer which is an output device. I hope the concept of PR sensor is clear to you. Now, this is the next sensor. This is called as sound sensor. To this sound sensor, there is a mic connected. 
Now this mic will sense the sound and will convert it into digital. Let's say again for example, if the sound sense is logic 0, then no sound sense may be logic 1. Now this is, I am telling one of the example, maybe the condition may be reverse. If there is no sound, it can be 0. If there is sound, they can be 1. It depends upon sensor to sensor how they are designed. But just for the case of example or understanding, what I am doing is, I am explaining you as when there is sound, it is 0. When there is no sound, it is 1. So presence and absence of sound can be detected as change in the voltage from or change in the logic from 1 to 0. I hope this is clear. Friends, this is fire sensor and this is photodiode. Now the job of this photodiode is to detect the wavelength of the fire. So this can detect the fire from the range of around 1 meter. Now to this sensor, I have 4 outputs, one for VCC, one for ground. So all the sensors which I have explained to you, there has one VCC, one ground and one digital output. But for this there is analog output also. So digital output will say presence and absence of the fire, whereas analog will say what is the intensity of that particular fire. Now how it detects the fire? With the wavelength of fire, not with the color. Suppose if I bring a color which is same as fire near to it, it won't detect. So this is detecting the wavelength. Now this is photodiode and this is. So presence and absence of a fire can be, presence and absence of the fire can be detected a change in the voltage at the digital pin. Let's say for example when there is no fire it is logic 1, when there is really fire it is logic 0. So my Arduino can detect presence and absence of the fire with the help of logic 1 and logic 0. I hope this concept is clear to you. Let's say the next sensor. Fine. This is the next sensor. This is called as obstacle sensor. Now in obstacle sensors there are two things like LED. One is infrared LED and another is photodiode. Now this photodiode you have already I have explained to you, I have shown you in fire sensor. It is same, but this time the wavelength will be different. Why? Because here one frequency will be transmitted and since it is transmitted or one rays will be transmitted and this transmitted rays will be reflect gone. Now if there is an obstacle in between, it will be reflected. Since it will be reflected, it will be detected by this sensor that is photodiode. Now this sensor has three pins, VCC, ground and digital. It gives presence and absence of obstacle. Such type of obstacle sensors are used are called as reflective type because it will give reflected wave and where they can be used, they can be used to detect obstacle, they can be used in autonomous robots, they can be used to detect bug, uh, right, uh, they can be used in the burglar alarms, they can be used in burglar alarms. So this is obstacle sensor. So if I use it in a car, what will happen the moment it will move, if there is some obstacle in between, it will sense that and it will control the speed of the motor. This is one of the simple application of this obstacle sensor. I hope this sensor is clear to you. We will see what is the next sensor. Now this is the next sensor. This is light sensor. This will find out, uh, this will detect presence and absence of light. Now here there is one component which is called as LDR, light dependent resistor. So this light dependent resistor changes resistance depending upon the light. When there is light, its resistance is low. When there is no light, its resistance is high. So this particular device or this particular module detects presence and absence of light. So again there are three pins VCC ground and digital output. Now let's say for example when light is falling on it, fine, it's a daytime. This sensor will give one. If it's night time, means there is no light falling, its resistance will change. So output status will change from one to zero. So presence and absence of zero or presence and absence of light can be detected as changing the voltage from one to zero. Now where these sensor, sensors can be used? Now, where this sensor can be used? This can be used in street lights. So, daytime the street lights will be off and nighttime it can be on. Same way it can be used in home for night lamps. For daytime the lights will be off, the night lamp will be off and for nighttime the light lamp will be on. And same way I can use it at the door as a burglar alarm. Now, when light falls on it, it will start beeping. So, I can use different combination of LEDs and uh, buzzers and I can have the conditions at the output. Let's say somebody uh, turns on torch at the light and if it is used as a burglar alarm, it will start beeping. That beeping will indicate that somebody is trying to open the door. It's very simple to use it. Now, yet what our sensors have explained to you, they are giving output some in digital format and some in analog format. Now, suppose if a sensor is giving output in analog format, then I have to use A0 to A5 to interface these sensors. That is pin number A0 to A5, which is uh, having an internally analog to digital converter. 
Now, if you want to have more details of the pins, you can watch my other videos. And the digital sensors can be interfaced from 0 to 13 pin or D0 to D13 pins. So, this way my interfacing can be done. So, interfacing and uses of these sensors, I will be showing in future videos. So, let us say what are the other sensors I can use. Now, this is a soil moisture sensor. So, these are the probes which I have to put in the soil and it will detect what is the present moisture level of the soil and this is the module for that particular probes. This is a sensor and this will uh, moisture sensed by this will be converted into two type of values maybe analog or maybe digital. So, this pins this particular module has four pins VCC, ground, digital output and analog output. So, digital output will give uh, sensing of moisture let us say as 0 then when there is no moisture it will give 1. So, presence and absence of moisture will be decoded as 1s and zeros. But analog will tell actually how much is the moisture or what is the particular moisture level. So, this analog pin I have to interface to any of the pins between A0 to A5 whereas this digital pin can be interfaced with 0 to 14 any of the pin. But remember one thing the digital pins which I am interfacing to this all these sensors has to be set to input with the help of pin mode command. I hope you know what is pin mode command and if you don't know pin mode command go and see my functions video in which I have explained you what do you mean by word pin mode command. So friends I hope this much sensors you have understood. Let us see what are the other sensors. Now this is looking like your previous sensor that is soil moisture but it is not soil moisture. It is basically a sensor which will uh, detect the water or presence and absence of water. So, I can use this as a rain drop sensor or I can use this in my tank uh, like when my tank is full or empty and this is a controller for the same. And now, this is a digital sensor and this digital sensor will give me presence and absence of water. So, when there is a waterfall on this, what will happen? It will detect and let us say again my no water means 1 and water means 0. Maybe the situation may be reversed also but here again I am telling you, again I am repeating I am using this as an assumption that presence of water will be 1 and absence of water may be 0. But depending upon the manufacturers, the condition may be reverse also. That is presence of water may be 1 and absence of water may be 0. Now, where then can be used? They can, this can be used in water tanks for filling up the water tanks that when it is full, the pump can be stopped and when it is empty, the pump can be started. Also, they can be used in uh, vehicles, in the car. Uh, so, when there is a rainfall, wiper will start automatically and the very uh, nice example what we can use it in our kitchen also that if by chance if a tap is remaining open, I can sense the water with that and I can close the tap. So, there are many different applications depending upon your knowledge, depending upon your imagination, you can use this particular sensor. So, we have seen multiple sensors. Now, we will see further also. Now, the next sensor is ultrasonic sensor. In this, there is one transmitter and other is a receiver. Now, again, this is working on some sort of reflection. So, what will happen? This sensor will transmit a burst of waveforms and it will wait to receive. So, when these waveforms are output, it will travel one particular distance and it will be received by this particular receiver. So, what this sensor or what I can do is, I can find out that when that uh, waveform was transmitted or the burst was output and when it receives. So, I can find out the time duration of transmission and reception and with this I can find out the distance that the obstacle is how much far from my particular object. So, this can be used to detect obstacles, this can be used to detect the obstacle or how much far the obstacle is. So, this is one of the use of this particular sensor or even I can put it on a motor and I can rotate. So, in the circular zone, I can find out where there is an obstacle. So, if I make a robot and if uh, if it is moving, so it can sense the obstacle and it can, if needed, it can move in that direction or in the opposite direction that depends upon my application. So, I hope the concept of ultrasonic sensor is clear. Now, this is the next sensor. This is gas. Now, this can detect LPG. There are same way some different sensors which are for sensing oxygen, then carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide and also the air purity. These sensors are named as MQ series sensors. Now, Figaro is the company which makes this sensor and these are MQ series sensors. This will detect LPG from the range around about 10 meters. Now, this sensors has again four outputs. 
Four output means VCC and ground. And as I have already told you, when there are four output means what? One is analog output and one is digital output. Now, you know what is the purpose of digital output. Digital output will give me presence and absence of gas. And analog will give me the intensity of gas. How many ppm the gas is in the atmosphere. Now, same type of if I have an air quality, air quality sensor, I can find out what is the quality of air surrounding me. I can find out the level of carbon monoxide. I can find out the level of carbon dioxide. Now, in this sensor, if this one is connected to VCC, other is connected to ground, digital pin can be connected to D0 to D14 and analog can be connected to A0 to A5. That are the analog inputs. Now, this analog value will be converted into digital inputs. And we can read that value with the help of analog read functions. Now, if you don't know these functions, please go and see my video of functions. In that, I have explained you what do you mean by the word analog read. Now, this is the next sensor. This is called as DHT11. Now, this sensor is for sensing the temperature and humidity of the surrounding. Now, this sensor is giving me digital output but serial output. And in this sensor, there is a thermistor and also a capacitor. Thermistor will sense the temperature. So, as the temperature goes high, it resistance will decrease. So, that is negative temperature coefficient. And then the another one is capacitor. So, humidity changing changes the value of capacitance that changes the value of the voltage and the digital output values change. So, this sensor can be used to find out temperature and humidity of the surrounding. So, that can help us out to have what is the level of temperature and what is the level of humidity in the surrounding and we can take some controlling action. Now, if this sensor is used my control uh, uh, processing plants, so I can have a particular temperature, I need a particular humidity, which I can read and I can sense and I can control with the help of my Arduino. So I hope you understood the concept of this particular sensor. And uh, this is a very small sensor. This sensor is touch sensor. Now what is sensors is our touch, that is the static energy of our body. So when I touch here, it will say somebody is touching and when I remove it is not touching and this will give me only digital value. So this sensor has three pins, BCC, ground and digital output. Now this digital output will give presence and absence of the digit, uh, presence and absence of a person. Now this ones and zeros can, let's say uh, this ones and zeros can be sensed as presence and absence of touch. Now where that can be used, it can be used at my door handles, it can be used my safe handle or my cupboard handle. So presence, if somebody touches, it will be and if somebody is not touches, there is no B. Let's say for touching, there is logic 0. For not touching, there is logic 1. So this logic 1 and 0 can sense a touch near that particular area. So friends, uh, in this particular part of sensors, I hope uh, you have understood the sensors. And these are the from few sensors I have tried to explain you. And using these sensors, we will see in further videos, how I can make my Arduino to work for my different purposes. Now friends, as you know, COVID-19 is going on. Now, we are trying to have a safe distancing. And how these sensors can help us in safe distancing. And uh, I don't have to touch the thing. If I come from outside, and suppose, if somebody is not there at home, then what I have to do? I have to open the tap, so tap will be touched. Water, then soap. So, instead of this, what I can do is, I can connect an obstacle sensor as an input, an Arduino, and a water pump. That water pump will dispense the soap water. Fine, I can use two pumps, one will dispense the soap water and another will dispense the fresh water and I can use two sensors. So the moment I come from outside, I will put my hand behind the first sensor so it will dispense the soap or sanitizer so I can clean my hands and again if I want to wash my hands, I can put in another sensor which will dispense the fresh water so I can wash my hands. So friends, this Arduino can also help us in maintaining the sanitization or even it can be a part of finding the COVID-19. So you engineers can even think how these electronic components can use for our uh, problems to solve our problems in such disastrous conditions. Thank you.